Gerudo weapons are, in my opinion, the best all-around weapons that you can get in Tears of the Kingdom. In a previous video, I showed you how amazing the Scimitar of the Seven could be. It's an insanely powerful weapon, but in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get all of the pristine Gerudo weapons. So the Gerudo Scimitar, the pristine Gerudo Claymore, and the pristine Gerudo Spear. The damage and durability of pristine weapons are significantly better, and you can get them all the time with the tricks we're going to be going over in this video. Now you'll notice if we get the Gerudo Scimitar with the attack up plus 10, it's actually only one damage shy of the Scimitar of the Seven, which I deem as one of the best weapons in the game. Now what's great about the Gerudo weapons is when you fuse them, they actually get a significant boost while fused. Like when we fuse the Silver Lionel Saberhorn, we get a plus 110 instead of 55 making our weapon now 137 damage. That goes for both the Claymore and the Spear, making these some of the best weapons in the game, if not, in my opinion, the best all-around weapons in Tears of the Kingdom. Before we can unlock the pristine versions of these, we actually need to acquire all of the decayed versions first. So we've headed to Gerudo because there's a Gerudo Spear that we can get that always respawns here every Blood Moon, so if you haven't gotten and broken one of these already, just head to Gerudo and drop down to this point right here, and you can get a Gerudo Spear. Next, we need to get a Gerudo Scimitar, so we're going to fly out of the Gerudo Canyon Skyview Tower, and we're going to head to this location just right here. When you fly out of it and you're facing towards Gerudo, you can see this little hole in the ground right here. That's actually where we want to fly and fall into. Once inside, we're just going to head straight ahead, and we can ignore any monsters that we kind of run across in here, but we're just going to open this bad boy up like this. And then I think we need to turn left down this hallway. And then we're going to turn right. So we're just going to ignore these Gibdo. Then we're going to follow the statue sword pointing to the right. And then we're going to grab Ultra Hand again. And we're going to open up this. And then in this left room sitting right here is going to be a Gerudo Scimitar. And we can just fast travel out of here. As far as I can tell, there's only two ways to be able to acquire Gerudo Claymores, and they depend on where you are in the game. If you haven't helped out Gerudo Town, you can actually acquire a free Gerudo Claymore right in this little courtyard right here. Otherwise, you gotta kill Like Likes. I thought maybe you could also get them from Mulduga, but I've done a lot of testing and I haven't had one drop yet. That doesn't mean you can't, it just seems to be really rare. Now, any Like Like in the Gerudo area can have a chance to drop the Gerudo weapons, so once you find a Like Like, you can just go ahead and make a save game. And then once you have your save game, just go ahead and murder its face and it's gonna drop a chest and inside this chest has a chance to drop the Gerudo Claymore as well as any other Gerudo weapon. Now any like like in Gerudo will work for this. Now any like like in Gerudo will work for this and now any like like in the Gerudo area will work for this. You can find them in caves, you can find them out of caves, but I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a bit of a tedious process. It's gonna be all luck based. You could get one on your first chest, it could take you 20 reloads to be able to get one. The one I'm farming up right now is inside one of these pits right here. You can also find a couple Couple more like likes right over here there's actually two at this location that you can kind of save scum until you get it and pretty much most caves and paths through this area here have some like like around as well hopefully you don't have as bad luck as me where it takes you 30 minutes to do this now that you've got all three of these weapons what you need to do is you need to actually break each and every one of them so break the spear break the sword and break the great claymore you can do this by jumping in the air and then hitting y and then that way you do this little smash onto the ground do this for all three weapons until they're all broken once you have all three weapons broken what we need to do is we need to actually go into the depths in the Gerudo area. So this whole area right through here will have the ability for us to get the pristine Gerudo weapons. Let's go after our Gerudo Scimitar first. There's a couple things that we need to do to make this happen. First, we're going to head to the abandoned Gerudo mine. And once you get this light route, we're going to open up our menu and we're going to make a new save game once you're here. Once you have your new save game, we're going to head towards this little loop of rock and we're going to head to these locations right here. There's also a little trick we can use to help you locate these ghosts before you actually walk up upon them. You're going to be able to see on your map these little objects that look just like this. They're exactly the same pretty much in all the locations. So if you see an object on the map that looks like this, there's going to be a ghost there and you can know to save before you approach it because it's really important to save before we approach these for the first time and we'll get into that in just a second. What we're going to do is we're going to hop right down this ledge and we should see one of the ghosts right here. 
And we gotta check and see what is in this thing's grubby little hands. Now, currently it has this weapon in here, clearly not the scimitar that we're looking for. Now, the interesting thing about these ghosts is if it's holding a one-handed sword, it will only spawn one-handed swords. Now, since we've broken one of our decayed scimitars, there's a chance that this ghost here can actually spawn that. But once you walk up to them for the first time, they're going to lock that weapon onto them until you pick it up and won't respawn a new one until you actually pick up that weapon and a blood moon happens. But there's a way we can manipulate this to actually continuously spawn it until we get the weapon that we want. So what we need to do now is reload the save that we made before we approached this ghost. Once you load back in, head back over to the ghost and see what weapon they're holding this time. Now, if you do this a ton and you're not seeing the weapon change at all, that means you probably accidentally loaded this ghost in and it's not gonna cycle the weapon, so we need to go to a new ghost's location or you need to pick up this weapon and wait for a blood moon. Now it can definitely take a few reloads for this to work, but as long as you see the weapon not being stuck on just one specific weapon, then you know you're actually cycling the ghost. And once we find our scimitar, what we wanna do is we now wanna save our game before we pick it up. So let's make a new save game right in front of it. And then once we pick it up, we're gonna see what bonus we get. I got attack up plus nine on here, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Well, I would have preferred attack up plus 10, but I'm pretty happy with nine. This time I got long throw considerably worse. Ooh, attack up plus 10 this time. That's great. We can see how this process works and you can continuously do this until you get the bonus that you want. Now, while you're exploring the depths, I definitely recommend anytime you see one of these towers here is saving before you approach it if you're trying to get pristine weapons this way. That way, anytime you find one, because there's one here, there's another one right over there. Anytime you find one, just save before you run up to it. So that way you can save scum it. Look, there's another pristine scimitar right there. So once you get the hang of this, you can farm these really powerful weapons up very quickly. So just around the abandoned Gerudo mine, there's already three locations right here where you can get the scimitar. Now we can also get the claymore and the spear around the same location. So from the abandoned Gerudo mine, you head to this location. You can go just a little bit farther south to right here. And you can see we've got another ghost that now has two-handed weapons. This ghost will cycle through various two-handed weapons and more specifically the Gerudo claymore that we're looking for. And thankfully it already had one in its hands. Now, just like before, always save your game before you pick it up so you can see what we got. So we got the Gerudo claymore with plus six. Now the way these weapons spawns works the same way whether you're at the beginning of the game or the end of the game. The only thing that can change depending on how far you are in the game is the bonuses that you get on it like the attack up plus 10. Now these stat increase bonuses are going to be dictated by your character's experience level. Yes, Link actually gains passive experience for everything that you kill. So the more monsters and more bosses that you've killed within the game, the higher level stat weapons you can actually acquire. And it'll also evolve the monsters around your map as well. So depending on how far in the game you are, you may be able to get the pristine Gerudo Claymore, but you may be locked to an attack up plus five until you progress farther in the game. Now, just southeast of this location where we got the Gerudo Claymore, you can actually head right down here to be able to get your Gerudo Spear. Now, the way I'm doing this is I'm just walking up and trying to get as close as I can without actually spawning in the ghost. And that's where I'm doing my new save game. Then from here, I just have to move just a little bit forward and see if it spawns. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am we have got our Gerudo Spear. You know, you'd think long throw on a spear would be good, but nah. Now, another thing you can do before picking this weapon up is actually taking a photograph of it. This is going to save this weapon to your compendium, which you can then target with your Sensor Plus to be able to track these down while you're exploring the depths. Now, this will only work if you have spawned one in. It won't actually recognize one that hasn't been spawned into the game, but it will help you locate ones that are spawned that you might have missed. Now, that being said, the problem with spawning in these ghosts is they are locked onto the weapon that they spawn with until you pick it up. So that means if you're spawning them all over the map, you might have to pick up a lot of weapons, wait for a blood moon, and then come back and try and spawn the weapons you're looking for. Now that you know how to acquire the pristine weapons, you can explore the depths of Gerudo to be able to acquire as many of these as you want, or just come back after blood moons and pick up the weapons you want when they respawn. But I do hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next one.